Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a Riesling from Germany and this is Lursen Brothers Dr. L Dry Riesling 2021. So it's a wine from the Moselle. In fact, Lursen Brothers Dr. L Riesling, the, the lightly sweet version of this, actually claims to be the best selling premium German Riesling on the US market. So this is a widely distributed brand and this is its dry counterpart. So also a Moselle wine with lower residual sugar. And the wine has the status of a qualitates wine. So a quality wine, but without being part of the Pradikat system. The Lursen brothers are Ernst and Thomas Lursen and their family have been making wine in the Moselle Valley for over two centuries. It was in 1988 that Ernst Lussen took over the running of his family vineyards. He took over vineyards that had belonged to both sides of his family, evidently his great-grandfather from the Prum family, so there was a combination of estates at this stage. And Ernst's approach was to, to concentrate on making wines from top quality single sites. The Dr. L brand was founded in 1995 and the emphasis of that was slightly different. The idea of the Dr. L wines was to produce a quality brand but in volume. Not necessarily to concentrate on single site wines but to create wines that express the nature and the style of the Moselle and would act as ambassadors for the region. It's Ernst who's actually Dr Lussen but on this brand he worked with his brother Thomas and between the two of them they managed the relationship with a large number of growers. So this is, is not made from fruit from their own vineyards. They do insist on high quality growing standards from anybody who's supplying them with fruit. For instance, the growers are expected to use sustainable vit viticulture. There can't be any herbicides or pesticides used in the vineyard. These vineyards predominantly have classic Moselle slate soils. The wines are GMO free. They're produced without animal derived processing age, so, age, so they're vegan friendly. Even down to the fact that the bottle makes it clear that this is a lightweight bottle. They, they, these are wines that are aiming to be as sustainable as possible. And the ripeness and the health of the fruit is very carefully monitored. And they won't accept fruit with rot or fruit that exceeds either the maximum or minimum ripeness levels that they're looking for. The winemaking for the Dr. L brand is done entirely by the winemaking team from the Dr. Lucen estate. As a vintage, 2021 was a cooler, more humid vintage that followed six warm dry vintages. In fact the cold winter allowed them to pick some of the 2020 ice wine on January the 11th of 2021. The region was fortunate to avoid the spring frosts that affected much of Europe in 2021 and what resulted was a long cool growing season and this, and this gave what they call classically elegant abundant fruit aromas. It ensured good fresh acidity and lower alcohol level. As far as the winemaking was concerned the fruit was pressed immediately on arrival at the winery, it was allowed to settle naturally and fermentation went ahead in stainless steel tanks at cool temperature with clean juice. No sugar was added to the wine and malolactic conversion was blocked to prevent the, the flavours that that produces from masking the aromatics of the Riesling. As I say, no animal products were used in, in fining this wine and will, it will have been bottled young to preserve its freshness. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? Looking at it here, you've got a light to medium yellow colour there, almost a hint of green. Swirling it, the wine has 12% alcohol according to its label and there's actually a little bit of viscosity there. It's clinging to the glass and is just about starting to form tears, although actually no, it's just falling back down the glass there. So it, it doesn't have the viscosity in the way that it would if, it, if, it, if the wine had more sugar in it. So let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? Very classically there are aromas of lime. And those, that lime has a sort of a, a top note of lime blossom, apple blossom, possibly even a tiny touch of, of honeysuckle, although I'm not suggesting there's a honey note there, more the sort of the lifted blossom note there. The liminess is perhaps a little indistinct, perhaps a little waxy, but it's certainly very pungent. The aromas are reasonably intense. So let's have a taste. Not completely unexpectedly. 
the acidity is quite tart and that really is to the fore. The wine is the wine is light bodied but there's actually quite a good intensity of very fresh limey fruit but it is just being cut through by this really piercing quite mineral acidity as well as the notes of lime there's a lemony note there's a sort of an almost grapefruit pith sort of note and i'm thinking of that really because of the sort of the mouth-watering nature of the wine the alcohol at 12 percent doesn't actually seem that evident you'd have thought with a lighter wine it might have stood out but actually there's enough concentration in the fruit that it's balancing that there is a very long lean finish not particularly generous but that mineral acidity there's an almost chalky or flinty note running through through the back palate there to the finish there are hints of lime but just at the moment the acidity is really sitting above that so yes you're just left with, left with delicate lime notes and hints of the, the blossom that we saw on the, on the front of the palette. The wine finishes with a mouth-watering freshness. Now the producer's notes suggested pairing this with things like ceviche or, or sushi and I can really see that working beautifully well because this is, this is it's a delicate, elegant wine that with gentle flavours of sushi or some of the oiliness of a ceviche would sit alongside those really, really quite enjoyably. I don't think it's a wine that requires aging because really it's its freshness that is its virtue. However, if you wanted to keep this for four or five years, the level of acidity is such that, and the, there's good fruit concentration, I should imagine that that would age quite happily in the bottle and could be quite interesting to see in a few years time. I looked at the Wine Searcher aggregated critic score for this and overall this gets a score of 89 out of 100. Now that may not seem particularly generous as, this, as there's actually quite a lot to like about this wine. However, it's quite simple. Its finish is quite one dimensional. And so I think, yes, the, that, that's, a, that's a pretty fair score for this wine, especially considering that its price point is not particularly high. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, do please press the like button. If you'd like to, to share the video with your friends, we'd, we'd welcome that. That would be fantastic. If you want to watch more of these videos, please do subscribe to our channel. And that way you can set yourself an alert and you can know every time we publish a new video. If you have any comments, please leave those in the box below. I will, as always, leave a link in the notes so that you can go through to the Wine Searcher website and see where this wine is available, what its pricing is, have a look at those critic scores and see any other background information that we have about the wine. So thank you very much for joining us and I do hope you'll be able to find some time and come along and watch another video with us in the very near future. Thanks again. Bye for now.